documenting metamorphosis uh, it's the 18th day of February um, yeah it's just uh, these moments of um, awake and you know there's times in between the first cup of coffee and the second cup of coffee you think about do I, I you know I'm not going to have that second cup of coffee I mean, there's no thought of having a second cup of coffee, but then you find yourself going to make that impulsive movement that there's about to be another cup of coffee made. Well, in between those thoughts, then, one can find oneself. And so I think I just found myself in a way that um, I've been sitting with this thing going, doing this... Um, this thing that I'm doing and presenting myself in such a um, a natural manner. Um, I was sort of sitting with something going, well, the point of doing this is to show this transformation. And, and I really thought I would have have gotten somewhere by now, kind of thing, you know, I would have achieved. I would have something to show for it. I would have become a success, you know, I would have something else would have happened. And uh, so I've gone for like the next two weeks of um, basic um, petrol, which is the most important thing, and food, second most important thing. So dog food, petrol, then food for myself. Uh, so the second two most important things um, should be forgone to get this guitar. So I've um, got this fantastic, beautiful, handmade electric guitar. $500. I'm really ready for going out and doing performance with that if it's just busking or um, doing like a performance 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 however that might manifest ready for that feel good about it have been doing some stuff but you know I'm not like selling tickets to 300 people kind of thing 20 bucks each Um, some things are changing though with this whole thing about having an income and the that point that I came to of in between the coffees is realising that there is a power that I've always had this kind of thing and I hope it was all mainly been in, in making people just burst into laughter uncontrollably from the good things. Even it might seem something that's quite tragic to me, then it's like they can't help but burst into laughter because I'm such an unfortunate fool in the way that I've done it. And quite often there's the natural thing that goes with that, that... Um, you know, like if there's a wall there or a door or something like that, then I can kind of just make it look like if it's sort of swinging back, if someone doesn't catch the door or something, or if it's just there, if it's just there, like, see, there's a wall there. If it's, if it's like half the distance from that, I can just include it in my um, going through the door or go around the corner or just um, having an interaction with another person having to place them. So the, the wall is, becomes very much a prop, naturally. Or things, it can look as though I've run into a wall, or look as though I've run into a door or something. And people start laughing, and I just, I play along with that. I could play along with it. Um, Then there's all this other stuff that I do that people sometimes burst into tears because of 
the compassion of how I touch them. And then there's just things I can do with horror, you see. <laughs> I can be extremely freaky. Oh, I'm very friendly, aren't I? I'm a very friendly person. I'm a friendly, friendly person. There's nothing to be afraid of. I'm a friendly person. That that even kind of made my skin crawl a little bit, you see. So I can do that to people. But now I feel um, with the knowing because I feel it in my body and I feel it out of my body as well. That I think I could make even like um, police officers and paramedics, and nurses, people who deal with emergency situations that have just got this kind of hard crust around them and shell, you know. I can make them walk into another room and just burst into tears from not really getting what I do consciously, but their soul and their heart kind of feels what I do and they see what I do for people well now I'm starting to get this kind of thing where I've got some kind of harnessing control over that as far as being compelling is concerned and so whatever I was just doing my hand was over there um, where the camera is which is over here now but that hand is still carrying some kind of energy which I kind of just lost as my eyes focused on it. But there's something that's compelling, whatever's going on over there. I know it's a lot to do with Tai Chi kind of form, but that's fine because that works well enough. For what? So you want to know what I'm doing? Why am I doing this? See, I lost that compelling thing. I bet if I bring it back, can I be compelling? Like, why in the hell would I do something like this? Well, what if I go and now do it? You see, is it this compelling? Doesn't matter what the hell I'm doing. Why would I do it? I don't need to be compelling. Look, I can trace the lines of my face. I have to character. I know who I am. I know who I am. I'm a monster. I'm compelling you to look at me. So, um, also with that, you know, like there's other things that one can do to kind of be funny or just be silly or to be entertaining. Like I managed to mimic puppy's emergency cry. Where they go and get themselves somewhere where they think they're lost. And what do you think about that, Elvis? to cuddle and if, when kids start gathering around I might just do that to <laughs> and so you know for instance if if anyone does actually watch this um, see if you can watch this now for the next 30 seconds and I can time this on the screen and let's see if you can keep a straight face ready one two three <laughs>
Sunday morning. Wasn't it? Noise carries around here because it's the lowlands, you see. And then there's residential here on the other side of this commercial land. But it's low, there's creek systems that run through, so. That'll, that'll keep them thinking. All right, so yeah, compelling, is it not? Is that compelling, Mr. Elvis? Hmm? Compelling. I feel that maybe, uh, uh, don't start barking, buddy. Don't, don't start barking at 110 decibels to 130 decibels in persistent um, fashion that raises up to a high level pitch. It's just a little bit too early in the morning for this part of the world right now. But where we're about to go, you can bark as much as you want. Okay? Okay? I promise. I promise, my mate. I promise. See, like, I, I can follow through on integrity. You know, that's what you do. Keep your promises to your dog. Just think about it, do what you say. Don't say too much about what you're going to do and do what you say. And if you tell the dogs you can do something, you make sure that you do it. So it seemed like a bit of bush strategy was just coming through there. Here, here, have that one for free. Cheer <laughs> out. <laughs>